Hello, welcome to the All Things Wrestling Hall of Fame. The first official All Things Wrestling Hall of Fame is now here. Welcome, it's I been... have presenting with me Stefan and Ben. Hello. 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 It's been a long time coming, guys. Yes, definitely. Uh, we've got four people to end up tonight. A non-wrestler, a tag team or faction, a female and male wrestler. So let's, uh, let's kick off with the first category, non-wrestler. It had to be the one and only Teddy, holla, holla, holla. Teddy Long player. Teddy Long. What a guy. Stefan, what do you think about Teddy Long being the, in the Hall of uh, Fame? Probably probably my favourite um, general manager of all time. Is. Honestly. Yeah, definitely. He had so many memorable catchphrases and just... He overall made SmackDown feel unique with his way he did manage it. With uh, the most memorable yeah. being, and Stefan said this earlier, you are to go one-on-one on one with The Undertaker! It's going to be turned into well, a tag team match, player, player. Uh, guys, it's uh, 2020, so uh, I mean almost 2020. So I hope he doesn't come back now and uh, makes tag team matches because I think we can all agree we had enough of tag team. <laughs> yes, Teddy, Teddy yeah. Long destroyed the of, tag team match. Yeah, of stupid tag team matches, you know, uh, every week. So <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, but yeah, very, very good, Teddy Long, first non-wrestler in the Hall of Fame. But let's move on to the tag team. And you have faction. to, you have to, you have to mention something. Not only the first, but the first inductee, dude. The first the, ever. The first inductee in the is Teddy Long, which was much deserved. Props to the man. But Props. now we have the tag team. The winner and the first tag team slash faction in the Hall of Fame is the Dudley Boys. The three. Spot Dudley, Devon Dudley, and Bubba Ray Dudley, not the 900 from ECW. Because I can't get a picture big enough to fit that. <laughs> yeah, Team 3D slash Dudley Boys are your first tag team inductee. Are you guys surprised? Because I'm not surprised. No. I'm not surprised, mate. I mean, I love the Dudley Boys, but I knew them more in TNA as Team 3D, and they did some amazing work. Oh, they were amazing. They definitely were. They revolutionised, well, hardcore tag team wrestling, really. Yes. They made the TLC yeah, match legendary amazing. with the hard, uh, Edge and Christian and Hardy Boys, who, well, yeah. Edge and Christian may sneak in next year. Maybe in the Hardy Boys. Maybe. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But, yeah, Team 3D. Very good guys. Even met Bully Ray. He's... Yeah. Bully Ray's Bully Ray. Yeah, basically. He's, he's just a no-nonsense sort of person. Yeah, he is. And if you look at him wrong, you're getting slammed through a table. He didn't put me one through, through one, which I'm sad about. It was <laughs> an entertaining. <laughs> yeah, good job, guys. Uh, Stefan, would you like to present the female? Yes, of course. Uh, it's the one and only uh, Paige. Yeah, Paige is the first female because she... Um, honourable mention to AJ Lee because she was the one that really started the uh, women's evolution. Yes, but, but Paige, Paige was, was the wrestling was... and she got that evolution to the next level. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And she, she deserves to be honoured for that. Yes. I mean, she's now a, she's officially retired right now. Hopefully, she can get cleared in the future because she's only what like thirty. Yes. She's not. She's not that old. Retired is not good, but definitely Paige did spearhead a lot of stuff in the last few years for WWE. So yeah, it's nice. It's nice to see like a nat a hometown native. Yeah. Be the first inductee into the ATW Hall of Fame. Yeah. Now, Ben, I'm going to give you this prestigious honour of giving the first male. Go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, your first male inductee into the ATW Hall of Fame 2019. 
the rabid Wolverine. This is Chris Benoit. Without a shadow of a doubt, I couldn't have put anybody else in here but Chris Benoit. And obviously, we got people who are probably putting in comments, why are you doing it? Chris Benoit did this. This is a wrestler. We're not talking about We are honouring the wrestling career of Chris Benoit, the in-ring character of Benoit. We are not honouring the outside person that Benoit was. This is strictly on wrestling purpose only. Exactly. Now, Stefan, what are your thoughts on Chris Benoit headlining? Um, staying kind of natural, you know, whatever you guys say, uh, it's fine. I think Stefan's indifferent to this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is a controversial you know, point, but I kind of felt it's to be real. Basically, what I'm, what I'm going to say, I'm not going to comment anything on this. It's well, deserved, obviously, when it comes to ring, in the ring talent, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going, I'm not going to even, you know. That's well, all I have to say. I'm not going to say anything. That is your right. But anyway, I thought if WWE aren't going to honor the wrestling character, I thought we at ATW would. Because there is still a big fan base out there for Chris Benoit, the wrestler. But yes, this has been the Hall of Fame ceremony to announce the first class of, of the 2019 All Things Wrestling Hall of Fame. And now, now it's time for awards right the end year awards uh yes well we kick off the awards for best male wrestler first place we do have a runner up in this category first place goes to le champion chris jericho and i think it's only fair that stefan introduces the runner up Yes, well, let's discuss run, Chris Jericho uh, first and then move okay. on to that. Uh, I'm going to first say something else about Jericho. This guy is 48 years old, right? Something like that. I think he's slightly older. He just shows everyone that Dave doesn't mean anything. This guy is incredible. He didn't have the best matches, but the fact, the fact of the matter is his gimmick, the way he always reinvents himself, that's something only white 2 j can do, and it will be it, it, it will be bullshit not to put him, you know, as a male wrestler of the year. Yeah, he definitely had. He's well, he basically kicked launched AEW this year by himself, pretty much. He's been carrying that company, and he's just gone from strength to strength with his character work. So I couldn't. I mean, guys, anyone. let's be let's be for real. He has his own champagne. That's a, a, a little bit of the bubbly. Yeah, I know. I want it, but I can't get it because it's shipped from England. So there, Jericho. Uh, but Stefan, would you like to say the runner-up for best male wrestler of the year? Yeah, I, I think there is no question about this. Uh, once again, um, Adam Cole. There is no question about this. The guy had an amazing year. And what I think probably one of the best years and probably one of the best NXT. You know, champion okay. runs. Uh, I think we can kind of all agree with that. Uh, but he is, when it comes to Jericho, you know, Jericho is superior, dude. Like, like I said, Jericho didn't have great matches as Cole, but he made, um, he managed to reinvent himself where Cole didn't. Uh, you know, it's the same thing over and over, over and over again. That's undisputed. You know, you can do that. It's going to get kind of stale. Yeah. That's that's something that uh, that's something that Jericho always kind of uh, get basically makes a new like a catchphrase or something like that it comes up with something new so that's only the difference between that right. yeah Cole had to get on here for his incredible match quality this year but unfortunately with incredible. the overall package he didn't edge out Jericho yeah. maybe next year Cole yeah. will be the male wrestler of the year yeah and I just want to mention since we're speaking about Cole and the reason like why he's a runner-up if uh this whole done uh, that's undisputed and everything, cutting promos and everything, it's going to get pretty stale soon. And I think we are kind of all aware of that. Yeah, well, I am you know, kind of so. waiting for a change up in Cole's character because they really yeah. do need to do something with him. But for now, he has been amazing this year. It is. That's it for that. All right. Best female wrestler of the year has got to be without a shadow of a doubt. Tessa 
Blanchard. Uh, what can I say, guys? What can I say? She is incredible. Incredible talent. The the actual, yeah. the, fa the actual fabulous work she's doing right now is putting a lot of women to shame. Yeah, definitely. She's she's probably the number one female wrestler in the world right now. Yeah. Is in terms of and talent. The match with Sammy Callahan. She has balls, even if she's not. You know, she has bigger balls than Becky Lynch. If, if you guys <laughs> want to be honest, like, let's be honest. Yeah. Don't. Definitely. But if we take a look at Tessa, she kind of mirrors China. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see a lot of China in Tessa Blanchard with the way she carries herself. Yes. Yeah. I. By the way, uh, I have a runner-up on this one, okay. and I know guys, you're gonna agree with me without any question. And that woman is Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Definitely. Just great. amazing. I think worker. she is so much improved. She is such a great worker. Uh, she managed to take the title off, the, off Shayna, which we all wanted for <laughs> over a year. So, uh, without a question, she is a runner-up. Yeah, definitely. Definitely the runner-up. Now, this will come to no surprise who the worst male wrestler of the year is. It's Baron Corbin, because, my God, no one has been worse this year than Baron Corbin. What can we say about Baron Corbin this year? Just shit promo after shit promo after shit promo after terrible match. Just nothing he's done this year has been good. I agree with that. Unfortunately, he's fell under the King of the Ring curse, hasn't he? Yeah, but it was even before the King of the Ring he was being terrible. Yeah. That Constable Corbin crap. It's that just, he's, doing. He's, he's so stale. It has no quality about him. In ring, heart ring, promo work. No. So, yeah, so I think that's all we can really say about Baron, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Um, worst female wrestler of the year, <clears throat> Lacey Evans. <laughs> you guys, I mean, <laughs> I don't really have anything to say about this because you guys know whatever you guys say, I'm going to agree with this. So. I mean, her, don't get me wrong, Lacey Evans' promo work, fantastic. Yes. She's really, really uh, good. Her, she carries herself in yeah. the promo very, very well, but she can't back it up in the ring. She's, but she's awful. sloppy, very sloppy work. And unfortunately, I just can't give her any more than... But I'm hoping Lacey Evans becomes most improved woman next year because I want to believe in Lacey Evans being good. Yes. But right now, yeah. she's just not. She is very still and um, uh, she boxes us a lot. Hmm. She does. Nah. Did you ever put Lacey Evans down to the fact that she was brought up to the main roster way too quick? Oh yeah, definitely. She was definitely brought up way too quick. It doesn't really help. Now, yeah. I think we've done on Lacey Evans. Moved over to most overutilised wrestler of 2019, Seth Rollins. Oh my god. Oh my he, god. I, th I, I, I think everyone who listens to our podcast, I think they, they will know how I feel about Rollins. And I think they also know how you feel about Rollins. So. I mean, I wouldn't have fathomed putting him in this spot a few months ago. No. Yeah. But but just over the last few months, he's gotten worse and worse and worse every single week. He's Very just annoying. he's just so he's there. I mean, his heel turn's good. I'm hoping he can bring it back with this amazing heel turn with AOP. But for now, what he's done for this year has just been diabolical, and just just annoying. And he's meant to be a baby face. Just, just very, very overutilized by WWE. We must move on to most underutilized. Um, I didn't do a male or female category here. We just did a set amount, a set um, one, and it's Marina Schaefer, which uh, hangs around with Jasmine Duke and um, yeah, Shayna I mean Baszler. It's sad, you know what I mean? When uh, someone has a potential and they just seen her like a, 
manager or something. I mean, you know, like a scene is lucky, lucky, and that kind of stuff. I think uh, she deserves better, and hopefully she's going to have, you know, an uh, opportunity to prove herself, because people say, like, oh, yeah, whatever. But she is really good, so... Yeah, she's yeah. definitely uh, good, and I can't wait to see. If, hopefully, with Shayna dropping the belt, there should be more chance for her to shine, I'm hoping, in 2020. I'm hoping as well. So. Now, most improved male wrestler of the year is Austin Theory. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, Roderick Strong versus Austin Theory is happening in Wednesday, so guys, if you don't know who he is... You can check out that match. It's going to be amazing. That's all I have to say about it. I will definitely be checking that out because I have no idea who this dude is. Yeah, he has no idea who that dude is. No. <laughs> uh, and we have a runner-up. Ben, would you like to announce the runner-up of Most Improved Male Wrestler of the Year? He is part of the Inner Circle and Less Sex Gods, Sammy Guevara. Yeah, I hey, mean, I love Sammy Guevara. I think he's, he's amazing. He's even improved from the first day he stepped into the ring in AEW to now, just a few months on. One, like one being big mentor of Jericho. Yeah, definitely. I mean, nothing but good could come out of him working with Jericho. Amazing, like, amazing guy. I amazing mean, he, twenty twenty could be that guy's year in AEW. Maybe we could he call is him English. Uh, yeah, I think he should definitely be like um, the first ever mid card champion. Yes. For the title yeah. they introduce next, so I think so. That would be that would be very that's, strong for him. That's how he should climb climb up the ladder. I don't think uh, putting the AW World Title on him would be a great move. I think. You, they have something great in Sammy Guevara, and uh, they need to be very, very careful what they're doing with him, because he can be the future of that company. And there is no rush. He is like 23, 24 years old. So. Yeah, he's got a long career ahead of him, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to do with him. Um, most improved female of the year, Mia Yim. She's done some good work this year, minus her Shayna Baszler match. That was awful. But she's definitely been more of a presence on a uh, on NXT and definitely have been doing some really good work this year. She was pretty good. Yeah, I definitely she... think she's definitely improved in in NXT because she started off really near and by the end of the year she's gone up a few levels on quality. I agree. Now, this is the good one. Stefan, would you like to announce the best pay-per-view match of the year? Yeah. Uh, Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano. NXT TakeOver New York. Two out of three falls match. That match was incredible. Yes, with uh, with Gargano winning the title. Uh, title was vacant. Uh, he won the title. Um, incredible match, incredible story told in, in that match for him overcoming the odds against the Undisputed Era. Just incredible match. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. Like, one of the best, well, it, well, according to Alice, it was the best of the year. But it, it was it, one of the best of the year. It was one of the best of all time, amazing. according to Meltzer. Yeah, you know? Meltzer gave it, what, like, I think it was five and a quarter stars or something for that one. Yeah. He really finally so, broke the five star barrier. Yeah, so if you guys didn't watch that match, if someone didn't watch that match, uh, make sure you go on WWE Network and check the match out, because it's a really amazing match. Yeah, it is. And we have a runner-up for best pay-per-view match of the year. Uh, the, well, I thought, was it? Yeah, I think it was... I can't remember what it was on. But the Young Bucks... Well, probably was. Uh, the Young Bucks versus Lucha Brothers in a ladder match. Or was it TLC? It was one of the two. They basically uh, had oh, ladders. It, it was a lot of match. It was uh, incredible that match was. Amazing match. Incredible. One of the finest ladder matches I've ever watched in my life. Second best. Only beaten by the Hardys, Edge and Christian and Dudley Boys at WrestleMania 17. Yeah, and whoever says that that ladder match is better, come on guys. Nothing beats Edge's spear. No, on no, no nothing beats that. Uh, but yes, 
Young Bucks Lucha Brothers did one of the best matches of the year with that. It was incredible. A lot of great spots. Lots of great spots. Like the Canadian Destroyer off the ladder through, through a table. A table. Yep. That was incredible. Probably the spot of the year, but we're not doing that award. No. And I know, listen, I know some people will be there who may not like that kind of flippy wrestling style or whatever those spots like that. But whatever you may think, you have to give guys credit where credit is due, you know. Uh, you have to have balls to do that kind of stuff. And it's a very big risk, so. Yeah. Now, Ben, I know you're looking forward to this one. Tell us what the worst pay-per-view match of the year was. Seth Rollins versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, Hell in a Cell. It could have been great. It could have been... It could have been up there as one of the best matches. Yeah, but ruined by Vince McMahon. Bad booking. Horrible. I mean, listen, sometimes predictable is good, which in this case, it should have been good. But they went a different way because it was they knew it was predictable. Now, it will be great if The Fiend won, because I honestly think uh, with The Fiend not winning the title, then they missed a big opportunity. And The, the Fiend doesn't feel the same. He is still great, but he should have won that title right there and then. Yeah. Yes. The finish was just... At, the match itself was basically Bray no selling every single thing that happened. But, we can, I don't know if Stefan will agree, but I feel like you would agree. That I don't think it hurt White as much as it hurt Rollins. No, it definitely like, hurt Rollins. The, the ego uh, of them both. I agree. And I'm not going. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Coop stump. That finisher is basically dead right now. I yes. mean, I can't take that seriously. Uh, I can't take that finisher seriously now. Well, you only have to take a look at the curb stump, don't you? It took what three to keep Lesnar down. Yeah. It, it's coming across as such a weak finisher. Yeah. I just want to mention something. If we get the Fiend versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and if Roman Reigns beats the Fiend with one spear, I'm fucking done with WWE. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, you'll finally join the ranks of the AEW people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, best. I like everything. <laughs> uh, Stefan, would you like to do the uh, best pay per view of the year? Oh, Survivor Series 2019. I think it was amazing pay-per-view, guys. Yeah, it was It was an incredible pay-per-view. They really pulled out all the stops on that, minus the main event. The main event doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really good Survivor Series. Definitely freshened up the concept this year. Yeah, I still can't uh, understand why, uh, you know... Why they had that triple threat match in the main event? No, neither can I. We, we had a big discussion on this on the podcast that, well, at this rate, it happened like a week ago, over a week ago at this point. Yeah, and guys, I know we agreed on this. Uh, the men's uh, tag team match or Cohen be done should have main evented that show without the question. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean to be fair, that I'm pretty sure that um, Shinsuke Nakamura, Roderick Strong, and uh, AJ Styles, was it? Yeah, he yes, was it would have been at the top. That was that should have been invented. That was an incredible. And the great match. thing about what happened there is Shinsuke Nakamura actually felt like old Shinsuke Nakamura, yes, which he we did. didn't see for two years. So that's why I gave it a very high rating. Yeah, I think the runner-up is uh, War Games. I just want to mention that as for myself because they took uh, crazy well, risks, and Matt Riddle and Finn Balor had a great match there. So. Wow. There is Stefan's yeah. personal runner-up. Personal, whatever, you know, just the yeah. personal runner-up. But uh, the other yeah. runner-up, more games is very, very good. Is yep. AEW all out? Great oh, yeah. pay-per-view. Yeah. Great, great pay-per-view. I mean, uh, the Cody uh, Dustin match, amazing match. The storytelling in that match, that was incredible. incredible. And Dustin pulled out a lot of moves I didn't even know he could do. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very bonded match because of it being brother on brother. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. It's summer that the last couple of hardest versus hardest match haven't been able to pull out. No. Been no patch. No, it doesn't feel like it. Now, 
moving on. Worst pay-per-view of the year, and the one that's only just gone, TLC 2019. Guys, do you even remember what happened in that paper? No. Because I don't. <laughs> it was awful. The main, I remember the main event because of how shit it was. What was the main event? Tommy? Yeah. The Kabuki Warriors versus Becky and Charlotte with Botchfest. Botchfest 2019. I'm pretty sure Botchmania had a field day with that match. <laughs> Shout out to Botchmania. Yeah. And please, I gotta mention something, please. Someone needs to teach Charlotte how to do a moonsault. Because she boxes it every time. Ben is not impressed with you right now. We love Charlotte. But yeah, her moonsault is kind of shit. Charlotte is the greatest woman wrestler to ever grace the ring of the WWE. Oh, well, surprise, surprise. She didn't win best female wrestler of the year, did she? And Tessa Blanchard did grace the ring of a WWE ring because she was in the Mae Young Classic. And therefore, Tessa Black, yeah, but Tessa, I, I would choose Tessa over for Chuck anyway. Yeah, she's fit. Uh, now, this is, I think, amazing. Um, best commentator. We have Amaro Ranallo as the best commentator of 2019. Because how could it not be Maro Ranallo? Just over. He just emphasises everything going on in the ring and makes everything feel important when he's commentating on it. The smallest of did moves you, feel important when Maro is talking did, about them. Yeah, did you hear last, uh, this week actually when uh, <laughs> when Cole and Balor had a match? I don't know if you watched NXT, but anyways, uh, Maro Ronaldo was like, Cole hit Balor between the legs. And Mar Ronald was like, oh, Adam Cole with his version of Nutcrackers. Mar Ronald is just brilliant. Uh, that says enough about Mar, Mar Ronald. <laughs> and also in the best commentator category, as runner up under Mar Ronald, as. An up and coming commentator that you've not I've not really heard of but over AEW's period, Excalibur. Oh yeah, I know Excalibur back from PWG days. He's a Amazing. really good commentator. He is really good. I think In my he should opinion, be better than Jim uh, Jim Ross right now. He is uh, if you watch AEW you will find that Excalibur leads the commentary team. Because he needs to, because Jim Ross is just getting too old. Yes. I, I don't think he knows what the fuck he's talking about. No, about no Jim, disrespect I mean Jim to Jim Ross, he's still he's still competent enough, just it's hard for him to keep up with any fast paced action yes. that goes on in the ring because bless the guy, he's like seventy, isn't he? Yeah. I mean I will never disrespect Jim Ross, just he kind of needs to take a slight back a back seat on it and let other the younger uh, commentators think... lead. Exactly. Give uh, a younger commentator opportunity, and he can work backstage. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like he, Jim Ross as well had a good stint of just being a now and again commentator for WWE. Yeah, he kind of doesn't need to be on every weekly show. I no. feel like every pay per view would work because they only have one. They only have like four a year. Yeah. But just not every weekly show. So yeah. Yeah, and I think. Do you guys remember when uh, Corey Graves said something to Ronaldo and uh, when he wasn't in one episode of NXT? Well, on that episode of NXT, Keith Lee launched Adam Cole in the crowd. And he was and he was flying like a ragdoll, okay? And I just wish Mar Ronald was there to call that. I think that was the biggest missed opportunity. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Call. Yeah. And leading on from Stefan's comment... Worst commentator, Corey Graves. Definitely. Stefan, what can we say about Corey Graves? What did you say about him? Bland? He's well, bland, boring, and a smug and asshole. Shit. And full of shit. Yeah, basically. Yeah. He's, he's too good for his own fucking boots. Yeah, he, tr he tries to act better than what he is, to be perfectly honest. I mean, the whole Mandy Rose, oh, God, is just really, really crazy. I'll tell you what, let's not talk about Corey Graves. He had too much attention on fucking social media, so fuck Corey Graves. Yeah. We are professional in this award ceremony. Fuck Corey Graves. We are professional. Two seconds later, 
Fuck Corey Gray. <laughs> that professional. is professional. Congratulations. Fuck Corey Congratulations. <laughs> Very professional. Uh, <laughs> best storyline of the year, Kofi Mania. Just Kofi's from winning the gauntlet oh, yeah. match to going to Mania and winning the title. Best oh, story. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Do you, know what, do you know what I feel I'd call this? What? This is the Rey Mysterio. This was the underdog storyline of it all. Yeah. It was fantastic. Um, worst storyline. I got outvoted on this one. I'd let Stefan introduce this one. Stefan, tell us what the worst storyline of 2019 oh was. Oh, God. I'm sorry, I can't even say you proceed to say you have that honor to say that story on because I can't even say that. It is the love triangle. These Lana Lashley and Rusev. It's entertaining, damn it! It's crap. It's crap. I agree. It's just the same shit they were doing before. Oh, like, like you guys people. would say, like you guys would say in England, there it's rubbish. It's it's, it's absolute crap. That's yeah. what it is. There's nothing else to say. It's crap. And you know what? It's going to go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. So no matter how much you hate uh, it, it's now you're going to learn to love come it. Guys, cheer up. We're going to have a wedding on December 30th. Oh, I can't wait. And there's no way Rusev is going to break up that wedding, is he? No, not at all. Who, who's that? Rusev. Oh, Vince doesn't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh. Just got. Two more final awards. Best feud of the year has got to be the Cole and Gargano feud. Boom. I mean, dude, is there even a... There, there are no words that I can say for this feud. Every single match they had was amazing. Yeah, yeah it was. And Pure quality. Yeah. And the story told, incredible. So, yeah. And God bless Adam Cole, you know, uh, the guy's probably uh, dead and they had probably ten, uh, you, you know what I mean, clones of him. Uh, so that's the only way he's alive because the guy is, the old Adam Cole is dead. That guy, there is no fucking way this is Adam Cole today. Mm. I'm dying, like. Yeah, the guy dies every time. He takes a, he has a max or takes a crazy spot, so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we do have one runner-up in the best feud of the year. Tessa Blanchard and... <coughs> Sammy Callahan. Yes, because those two have been doing amazing work together in Impact Wrestling. So, yeah. definitely have to get the runner-up for those yeah. two. And I have to just to add something. Guys, if Adam Cole dies every pay-per-view or every single week... And he gets cloned. Imagine what's going to happen when Vince McMahon dies. He's never going to die because he's going to clone himself every single time. No. Stefan! The guy, the don't guy, say the guy that! Money. Don't hey, money. say that! I can't Dude, do money this speaks. Come on, Money speaks. No, we don't need Vince anymore. No, please get rid of Vince. Please. Yeah. And just the final one. The worst feud of the year. Well, we've gone with Roman and Corbin, but it could have been easily Roman and Shorty G, or anything that Corbin has basically done this year. Who? Shorty G? Did you say Shorty G? Uh, that, that's kind of like what it could have been, but it is the Roman-Corbin one that's been happening for the last few weeks, because that's whoa, just whoa, been whoa, awful. Whoa, but who is Shorty G? Shorty G? Shorty G. Oh, I thought Chad Gable. I don't know who the fuck is Shorty G. I don't no, who the fuck is Chad Gable, mate? There's no such thing as Chad Gable. Dude, I, I thought uh, Shorty G is dropping a new rap album on Spotify. <laughs> Along with Grand, Grand, Grand Slam J. <laughs> Slam Master J. Oh, God. Just, Corbin has just, oh, he's featured twice. Corbin's shite. Yeah. Sorry, Corbin, but honestly, your wrestling character shit. Yeah, but he is not a bad wrestler, though. I gotta say that. No, he's, he's an alright wrestler. He's just... Everything else is just shit. Oh, by the way, in the King of the Ring match, in matches actually in the King of the Ring tournament, he was pretty solid. Hmm. Mm. You know? So. Yeah, some good matches. 
against Trent Gable. And then, of course, as WWE knows to do, they do it over and over again every single weekend, and he gets fucking bored. Hmm. That's Vince for you guys. Yep. Yeah. This is why we don't need a clone of Vince. Exactly. Because the bull end up having hey, a clone of clone, The Rock versus John listen, Cena for the next 45 listen, WrestleManias. Guys, clone or not, the guy is going to book shows over a spirit box, okay? When he passes away. So. Do you know what? That's very believable. It's been from the man. We gonna I'm see not Winston dead, I'm in house. Go Sanders, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, in, in 2080, in 80 years from now, he's gonna be like, uh, uh, yeah, I want uh, John Cena versus Roman Reigns for WrestleMania. And we're gonna be like, hey, uh, God, <laughs> they're not even alive anymore. <laughs> 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 like, oh, don't get uh, me Roman Reigns on the spirit box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is the awards for 2019 and the first ever official Hall of Fame from ATW. Now, everybody has had their respective awards. Some people really wish they didn't get their awards. <laughs> Especially all the worst oh, categories. No, no, Fuck Corbin and Come Fuck on, Graves. <laughs> but yeah, congratulations to the fir the class of 2019 ATW Hall of Famers. Uh, and be expected, and we'll be back this time next year for the 2020 Hall of Fame and Awards. December the 30th, 2020 will be the next award and Hall of Fame ceremony. So yes, thank you all for tuning in. We do hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave yours, your awards, and who you would put in the Hall of Fame in the comments. Have a nice discussion among yourself. Say how wrong we are, and how everything we said was stupid in the comments below, because this is YouTube. And we shall catch you later. Bye! That's the one. Hey, I, I think that's the one, guys. Come on, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs>